In terms of the various places around the world, um, essentially we think there's a nasty recession going on in Europe. Banks are withdrawing credit lines and uh, we have a decline of about 0.6 this year. I think most people in terms of the IMF and the government are talking about minus 0.2. I think this is a serious recession and I think it's also an issue in, um, in Europe at present that the politics is catching up with the economics, as you've probably seen in the French and Greek elections. And I think there's a big issue over there in terms of social uh, cohesion in there. But at the end of the day, um, the chances of a banking crisis, I think, have been much reduced by the ECB's actions of basically giving banks as much money as they like at 1% interest rates for three years. Um, and that sort of saved that. Um, the European recession does have significant effects in Australia and Asia in particular. People probably aren't aware, but 25% of everything that China produces goes to Europe. And that has a big impact on Chinese manufacturing and exports. And it's slowed. And so what's happening in China is basically they're easing up on policy. That's also happening through Asia. But essentially for us, we have China around about 8%. Uh, Asia, we have Asia around about 4%. Um, the US is basically growing. There's going to be a lot of politics. It's not double dipping, but it's not growing fast enough to significantly lower unemployment. And uh, I suppose India, the same sort of story. It's slowing, but it's slowing to 6% growth. If I look at the world according to Australia, I, we weight our growth in the world according to who we trade with, we get 4%. The Treasury is more optimistic about Asia than we are. They get 45 but the bottom line is, provided that you don't get some disruption coming out of Europe, um, the world doesn't look that bad for Australia. This is sort of a graph that I put up um, and try and compare, if you like, the big economies, the, on the left-hand side, US, Japan, and Europe. Where were they at the time of the GFC, which is on the left-hand side, and where are they today? Basically, those economies have done nothing in four years. And you look on the right-hand side, which are ones that we're geared into, you can see massive change. When people talk about a multi-speed Australian economy, what I'm really saying is it's a multi-speed global economy. And we just happen to be exposed to the right-hand side, which is pretty good.